Hello there, this is Dizzy, and it's time to play some Minecraft. So today, uh, the, the build that we're going to be doing is something I haven't seen anybody else do. Uh, I've actually, I've seen one other people, person do it on, uh, on YouTube and they did it in creative. So, uh, what I want to build is a forestry greenhouse. Now this particular multi-block structure from forestry is uh, very powerful and that it lets you change the climate for a given area. So you can see here, I've outlined a five by seven area where we're going to build this greenhouse and, uh, the, the you know, what this will allow us to do is construct an area that we change the humidity and temperature so we can breed different bees. First, let's go ahead and uh, just take a look at what we've got set up here. Um, so it's five by seven area. It's going to be five by seven by four tall. And I've gone ahead and plumbed in some power and some water. Uh, you can see that I've got a, uh, uh, a uh, pump from immersive engineering, and then I've got a simple redstone conduit. Uh, that's tied to this bee processing facility power. Um, so that's that's what we're going to use to power this thing. Now these these particular structures uh, with with you know a heater and a um, uh, with, with a heater, for instance, uh, pulls about uh, 10 RF per tick. If you put multiple heaters in, I've seen it get up as high as 15. So they're they're not really that expensive to run, but you do need a steady power supply. Um, but they can, they can really allow you to do some interesting things, uh, with the bees. So, uh, the next step now is for us to go up to the house and we're going to get some, uh, pick up our materials. Um, you can see that this world, uh, I've been playing in it for a little while and, uh, I've had a lot of fun. Uh, I'm using a custom mod pack that I, that I designed with custom origin. That's forced me to, uh, to play a little bit differently and spend a lot of time, um, sort of touring the world and setting up logistics systems and so forth. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so let's just go into the house real quick and uh, take a look at the materials we need. First, let's take a look at the blocks that we're going to need before we take a look at the materials. So if we do a search for greenhouse, we can see there's a bunch of different blocks here. There's the, a block, a glass, or a glass. There's input hatches. There's a gearbox for powering it. There's valves for pumping water into it, a fan for cooling it a heater for making it hotter, a dryer for reducing humidity, uh, and a control for doing redstone stuff, a sprinkler for increasing humidity, so the sprinkler plus the valve is how you drive the humidity up, and a climate control block, which is really important since it allows you to actually set the desired temperature and humidity as a multiple. Uh, I guess I've never actually used the butterfly hatch, but uh, I suppose if you're breeding trees, that would be interesting. So these are the, th you know, these are some of the things we're going to need to build. Now today we're, we're shooting to build something that will let us breed marshy bees, which require a normal humidity and a uh, damp environment in our plains biome. So we're going to need uh, blocks for the foundation. We're going to need glass for sort of the surrounding. We're going to need a gearbox. Uh, we're going to need uh, a valve so we can pump water into it. And we're going to need a sprinkler. These other blocks are all pretty straightforward. They're just based off the greenhouse block with some gears and so forth. So uh, pretty straightforward to build as well. So let's take a look at what our floor is going to be made out of. You can see that it's just bricks surrounded by these camouflage paneling. Um, and so for each block, we need eight camouflage paneling. Um, now that doesn't seem too bad until you look at the recipe for camouflage paneling. In a carpenter, you use some biomass and then you use ash or, or sorry ash uh, wood pulp a couple of lapis a couple of rose red and a couple of dandelion yellow this makes half a block so that means for every block we're going to need four lapis four rose reds four dandelion yellows ash and wood pulp and planks plus a full bucket of biomass to make one block so we're going to need you know, for this particular build today, we're going to need about 111 blocks or so. Uh, so I've just shot for 128 in total, since it's a nice round number. That's going to require us to generate about 1,024 camouflage paneling at least. Uh, and it, it is a lot of resources. So you can see here, if we look in the iron chest, I've got all the resources needed to make the paneling. And you can see it is a lot. Uh, it took me quite a lot of mining to get this much lapis. I, I needed a full stack uh, silk touch that I then ran through the crusher. That's what that is. Um, the rose red and the dandelion yellow were 
pretty straightforward. Uh, you can get the two tall rose bushes and use bone meal on them to get these, or you can use a pulverizer if you have thermal uh, thermal dynamics. Uh, dandelion yellow, you can use bone meal on a sunflower and get plenty of this. But still, you can see that's you know that's a lot of bone meal as well. Um, so it's not cheap. Uh, the ash is actually a forestry specific um, resource that is made from peat and peat is made from bog earth. So what you do is you make a bunch of bog earth, you throw it on the ground, uh, put water close to it and it turns into peat. Then you cook the peat and you get ash. So this took quite a while as well. This took, I think, probably about three or four Minecraft days for this to all cook up. Wood pulp is, is made very easily in the carpenter. You just put water and, uh, and uh, these uh, wood blocks and you get a ton of wood pulp. So that's pretty straightforward. But the lapis and the rose red and dandelion yellow was a lot of work. So that's what we need for all the panels. Uh, and this is actually enough uh, for our particular build today. Uh, in addition, you're going to need some glass uh, because the greenhouse glass is the same thing as the bricks, just with glass. So you still need camouflage paneling for everything. You need some bricks, uh, some assorted uh, metals, uh, a couple of 10 gears, and a couple of different electron tubes. So you're going to want to get your thermionic fabricator out for that. So the next step for us is to go ahead and uh, carry these down to our processing facility where we've got a, I've got a pretty large tank of biomass that I've cooked up uh, and then uh, start making the paneling back in a second. Okay. I've made my way down the hill to my processing facility. I've uh, tried to make an area where I can process uh, all the sort of common things that, that get generated as part of bees and I've used impractical storage to give it a nice warehouse feel along with some conveyors and so forth. So you see here we've got a tank of honey, we've got a tank of uh, biomass which you have to use honey to make uh, and uh, and we're going to use the biomass to make all the panels. So I'm just going to go ahead and put down this chest. I'm going to put it right here. You can see I've run a pipe so that we can get stuff over to the uh, over to the um, carpenter that we've got hooked up. Uh, and actually that might be starting. Yeah, okay, it's not piping anything out. So what this is gonna let us do is pipe the panels out as we make them. Now, uh, I've already got the recipe set up here. Um, I don't know why I used blue dye. I think I just used any eye to put it in. So let me go ahead and get some resources out of this chest. I'm just gonna get two wood pulps, two ash, two dandelions, three of these, three of these, oh, one more of those. And then I need some wood as well. So let me turn this into a, some planks. All right, so let's load all this up. And that should enable it to, wait, did I forget something? Oh yeah, the wood pulp. All right, that should enable us to start uh, generating the panels. And then as they're made, they'll get pumped out. Um, this particular process takes quite a while. Uh, we're making a thousand of these, which is, I think, something like 16 stacks. Um, so what I'm going to do is let this run for a while and then uh, come back and, and show you uh, once we have all the panels. Um, I think one thing of note here uh, before it gets totally dark is how I made the biomass. Uh, I set up this fermenter, uh, filled it up with honey and fertilizer, and then I set up a garden cloche for cactus. Uh, and pumped that into the fermenter. And that generates uh, biomass, which I then pumped into this tank. Um, but it uses a lot of honey. Uh, this took generating enough honey to make all the biomass we needed, because uh, we need about 128 buckets of biomass, took a long while. Uh, I believe that the, that the honey ratio to biomass is like 75%. So we need, you know, 100 plus buckets of honey to make... Uh, to make 128 buckets of, of biomass or something like that. So um, that's where we're at. It's getting dark now. I'm going to go sleep and let these cook up overnight. And uh, we'll come back when they're all done. It's going to be a while. Okay. Be back in a few. Okay. We're back and uh, we have generated our 16 uh, stacks of panels and it actually worked out perfectly. I'm a little bit surprised at how well it worked out. We've actually got some lapis and rose red left over. So probably what I'm going to wind up doing, uh, is going out and getting more dandelion yellow so that we can, uh, 
make some more panels because it's with with this much lapis uh it took a long time to gather and i want to make the most of it so um now that we've got all of our panels we can start working on assembling uh the necessary pieces so uh the next step is for me to uh let's just move this over here by our crafting table and uh, i need to go get that other chest from the house uh, so let me go do that and come back and then we'll start uh, putting the pieces together okay we are back uh, i have retrieved the other chest with our bricks so let me get those and let's just pull out all these panelings right here All right, so first we're gonna to need to make the, the foundation, which uh, for seven by five is gonna be 35 bricks. So let's go ahead and do that. There should be just enough here, yep. And uh, then we're just gonna surround it with uh, panels. So I'll just put each of these on here. And uh, cause we're, we're just gonna wind up doing this again and again. All right, so that'll give us our greenhouse blocks of which we need 35. Um, and so we are also going to need to go ahead and do our valve and our gearbox. So, so the valve will go over the water, the gearbox will go over the power, and then that whole thing will be powered. So uh, let's take those two blocks and do that. I'm going to have to look up what I need to do for that. So let's see here. The gearbox requires three 10 gears and the valve requires one 10 gear and glass so let's get our glass let's get our 10 gears and uh let's see if gearbox and valve okay and that should be everything that we oh we need the climate control that was the other thing that we need uh so if you just assemble the greenhouse without putting a climate control in there, you're not going to be able to actually change the temperature or the humidity. Uh, this took me a little while to figure out. Uh, because the greenhouse will form, you just won't have any inputs. Uh, so we need to also make this. So let me get my uh, other things that I need out of here. And uh, we'll go ahead and assemble that. Okay, so those are the three blocks we're going to need for the uh, to, to increase the humidity in this area for the marshy bees. So we should be all set at this point with that stuff. So let me just put these materials back away since I don't really need those anymore. And let's go put the floor in. And uh, let's see here, we're gonna want the climate control and the valve and the gearbox. So let's do the gearbox first. I'm gonna put it right there. We'll put the valve in next, and we'll put the climate control in as well. So the nice thing about this particular setup is that uh, you go into the greenhouse and uh, you know, you'll have access to all these blocks. Um, you know, I could put them on the edge, but I, this is just sort of the way the, the wiring and the water worked out, so I'm just going to go with it. Uh, oh, so let's put the rest of the floor in as well. And that will be the first part of this build uh, ready to go. And then we've just got to make all of our greenhouse glass, uh, the sprinkler and the door, and we will have a full greenhouse. So uh, let me come back over here and make the greenhouse glass. Um, now for this, we're going to need for the glass or for the walls, the, the glass walls, we're going to need 60 blocks. Uh, and then for the roof, we're going to need 16. So, seven, so 76 altogether. So let's go ahead and need more, more glass here. So let's just put all of these in place. And then we'll have, uh, have what we need. All right, so we've got 64 greenhouse glass. Uh, let's, we've got to get uh, another six, seven, or uh, nine more. That should do the trick. Uh, famous last words. So let's go ahead and put this thing together. Now, 
Uh, there's a couple of different it's pretty straightforward. You have to make sure that it's over over these blocks. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if there's a way to avoid that. But we'll, we'll do it this way for now, uh, since I know this works. And that's kind of where we want to be. I'm going to leave space for the door there. And then we just want to put these in here. And as you can see, it's not going to be a lot of space in there. Uh, it's just enough room, really, for the apiary, um, which is, you know, that, that's sufficient for our purposes. Um, but if you wanted to build a bigger one of these, you would need a lot of resources. Uh, there might be an optimization we could do that would let us uh, save some save some blocks, but it wouldn't help that much. So we're going to make it uh, three tall, and then the roof will be the fourth level. Uh, and we're going to set the roof up in a in a way that saves us some blocks as well. Um, let's see here. All right, so there is that. So now we don't have to cover on the roof. We don't have to cover, you know, all of these top blocks. Um, but we do have to make sure that the multi-block structure can form, which means that there has to be some connection. So in other words, if I just do this and fill in the space, right, like this. So let's just do this and, and, and watch what happens. Um, what you'll see is that the multi-block won't form properly because it has no way of knowing that this greenhouse glass is connected to this. So what we're going to need to do, and actually we need to make some more greenhouse glasses, we're going to put one block on the back here that will be enough so that the, the logic that makes the multi-block structure form uh, will work properly. So let's go make some more greenhouse glass over here. Uh, so we're going to need that one, and then we're going to need uh, enough for the door and the sprinkler. The door ne needs six, so only seven, eight all together. So let's get eight more. That's four. And four. And, and that should be enough for our purposes. So let's go ahead and make the door real quick so that the multi-block can actually form. All right, so... It's getting to be evening here. All right, so we're going to put this one connecting block on the back. Now, it could be anywhere, right? As long as it's connecting the wall to the ceiling in some way, that will be sufficient. And now we can put the door in, which is, is fine. And you can see now that the greenhouse is formed. Um, a couple of interesting things at play here. One... The temperature and the humidity, these are sort of multiples of whatever is natural in this biome. So saying that the temperature is 2.0 means that if this biome is, is normal and we put a heater in here, that's going to drive the temperature up by 2x, whatever the biome temperature is. And 2 is the maximum uh, and 0 is the minimum. So you can only vary it by that much. Uh, same goes for humidity. Now, another interesting thing, uh, a bug that I've noticed is that uh, if you... When you first form the multi-block, uh, you wind up with an icy and an arid uh, climate, even though the biome we're in right now is not icy and arid. Um, not quite sure what's going on there and, and why that's doing that. So, that yeah, that's, that's just a bug. Um, I might have to make a heater block. I can't remember how I fixed that. Anyway, I'm going to go sleep real quick, uh, and then when we come back in the morning, we will pick up uh, where we left off. So uh, I'll be back in just a few moments. Okay, and we're back. Uh, it is the next morning, and uh, the greenhouse here, the, the climate has, has reset itself to what it ought to be, which is uh, 80 and 40. Uh, which is both normal and expected for the plains biome. So uh, the next step is for us to uh, get the uh, get the the necessary uh, uh, pieces put in to to drive the humidity up. So I've gone ahead and made the sprinkler, which is just a greenhouse block, some lapis, ten gears, and iron. And let's go ahead and uh, put that up in the greenhouse here. And if we look now, we can see the humidity is already from 39 to 40. And if we give it a second more, uh, it should uh, get up to 41. So it takes a while uh, to affect the, client, the climate change. Um, 
And every time you break the block, it goes pretty quickly back down to whatever the, the biome is. So something to be aware of. Uh, it, it just takes a while to, to get it where it should be. The door being open or closed really doesn't matter. Uh, it's really the, if the multi-block is formed. So uh, we're going to go ahead and let that cook for a little bit. Um, I'm going to come over here and uh, marshy bees require a mushroom uh, as their flower. Now, here's the catch. Um, the mushroom has to grow in the dark and to plant it, you have to be in the dark uh, at a certain light level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig, uh, there's my railway. Hmm. Well, that's going to be a problem. Uh, I have to figure out how to do that. So this is how I actually, uh, sort of fun side note, this is how I transfer power between the house and the processing plant. Um, immersive engineering, you can do HV and, you know, uh, for the distance from the house to the power plant, we lose about 4% uh, of our power, uh, even using HV. Uh, so what I decided to do was use uh, Railcraft and use an RF loader and, and so forth. So this RF loader holds about 2 million. This has a buffer of four. And then back at the house, uh, I'll just take you back over there real quick. Um, I've got a uh, I've got a little turbine set up in the basement, and this can generate up to 400 RF per tick uh, using canola oil. You can see right now it's not actually burning anything, uh, or occasionally it's burning something. So this actually works out really well. And with that train transferring the power back and forth. Um, yeah, there's the canola plant, by the way. So it just runs and uh, drops it into the processing. Or if it can't do that, it puts it into the garbage can over there. So we don't have overflow problems. I've actually got to switch off right now. Um, and these guys are just doing fine. We're not, we're, we're not burning that much. So it doesn't really need to run all the time. But that generates the power, uh, dumps it into those buffers, and then Railcraft shuttles it down there when it gets full and empty when it comes back. Um, so that was kind of a diversion I wasn't planning on. But anyway, uh, we need to so we need to plant mushrooms. That's where we were at. So let me get back down here, and uh, we should be able to do it on this side. So so when you when you set up the flowers for for the bees, you don't actually have to have them inside the greenhouse. They can be outside the greenhouse, and that works just fine. Uh, and I don't have a mushroom. Well, that's disappointing. I thought for sure I had one. Okay, uh, let me go get that. And uh, then I'll be right back in a minute and we'll put the mushroom right there. Okay, we're back. I just went over to that uh, jungle uh, not too far from here and got a mushroom. And I put it underneath the, uh, uh, sort of underneath another block so that I could actually plant it in the right uh, light level. So let me just uh, close up this hole here. And so now we've got the, that's the flower that the, that the marshy bees uh, are actually going to need to, uh, to run. Um, it's okay. It's not in the greenhouse. It's a little weird, uh, but but it'll get the trick done. So let's go in our greenhouse now. Um, and you'll notice if we it, our humidity is up to sixty nine percent. I believe that eighty percent is is considered damp. So there's a couple of things we want to do first. First off, uh, we don't really want this to look like a brick floor. So uh, we can drop a grass block into the brick here, and that uh, changes the camouflage. So it looks a little nicer. It looks like a greenhouse. Uh, let's go ahead and put down our uh, our apiary here, and we're going to put in our bees. And you can see they're already uh, they're already generating, but they're going to say the climate's not right, and they'll say it's too dry. So once this humidity reaches 80, which it will in just a minute, uh, we should be able to uh, th they should just start running, um, which would be very cool because they're they're running in this environment, uh, in this biome. Um, and so we'll see what happens here. I'll uh, just give it a minute. Let's see here. Let me fill this in while we're waiting. It's almost there. Um, you know, uh, a side note on, on the greenhouse. You can't actually use this for uh, any bees that require the hell biome. Uh, there, It's not possible to set the temperature high enough or the humidity low enough for that. And that's just because of the way that the uh, that the, the checks for for those bees are implemented, um, the well, I, I guess a better way of putting it is it's the way that that the biome is checked for those bees. Uh, that's that's stored uh, in a different kind of variable than temperature and humidity. So there's no way to use a greenhouse to do that, as best I can tell. Now uh, that's just based off my read of the code. Maybe I missed something there. Um, 
but you can use it for you know desert bees and and so forth uh and obviously marshy bees and and anything like that where uh, uh, heat and temperature or heat and hum or temperature and humidity uh, are what you need to modify so we should almost be there now 78 79 and we should see those bees start flying in just a second so let's just go in here and watch it flip over to 80 and uh, that should work for us uh, famous last words I suppose but I'm pretty sure this is going to work okay uh, it turns out I was wrong it actually needs to be 85% uh, humidity uh, before it's considered damp um, but you can see the bees are running. Our marshy queen is running and sending out little, uh, little drones to get stuff. Uh, and we're doing this in the middle of a plains biome. So, uh, it's a, it's a pretty cool setup. Um, it's small. If you wanted to make anything bigger, I think you'd have to have some sort of mass mining, uh, system set up. Um, it can be done by hand, but it's very expensive. It's, it's, you know, the other part of this is that I'm, the alvearies, you can do a lot of the climate control as well for the bees. So just strictly for bees, I don't think the greenhouse makes sense as it's currently balanced. Uh, it's just too expensive to do. Uh, and it's more complicated than the alvearies. I mean, you have to have all the infrastructure in place to build an alveary that you need for uh, a greenhouse as, as well. So you have to sort of build even bigger. So I, I'm i just sort of dubious as to uh, what the what the intent is there. Um, I, I mean, I guess climate control is kind of a big deal. So, so maybe that being able to do that is, is worth the higher price. I'm, I'm not sure what they were thinking there. Um, but, uh, if, if, you know, once you've got one alveary, it's not too hard to get the rest of them. So, um, for, for trees, building a, a, a greenhouse big enough would just be enormously expensive. Uh, so I'm not even sure how that would work either. So, um, so something to think about. It's, it's a neat build though. Uh, I'll probably do a couple more of them so I can do desert bees and stuff like that. Um, but uh, it, it was a lot of fun to build, uh, very challenging, and uh, something that, uh, you know, after you finish the alvearies and you do a greenhouse, you're like, I, I think I've reached forestry endgame, or at least that's what it feels like. I guess I need to get into tree breeding next, uh, which should be a fun challenge. But thanks for joining me on this little, uh, little adventure. Hopefully it was uh, interesting and fun and uh, somewhat useful. See ya.